Hey guys, Corey with Palmetto Battery Pros, and today we are gonna be doing a lithium conversion on this 1999 Club Car DS. We are gonna be installing the 51.2 volt, 72 amp hour LifePo 4 golf cart battery by Eco. The installation bundle comes with everything you need to convert your golf cart over. So included is the onboard charger, which this is the charger output wire with the positive and negative eyelets. The charger input wire, connects to the 120 charge receptacle via the quick connect which is a secure and weatherproof connection the kit comes with the dash mounted voltage meter and securing bracket eco also provides the 48 to 12 volt reducer so there's only 48 volts at the terminal so we're going to need to reduce it for all of our 12 volt accessories and this is the wiring harness for the 12 volt reducer and we'll show you how to install that here in a second as always, make sure your golf cart key is off and your golf cart is in tow. And next, we will go ahead and clean this battery tray top to bottom. This is an older cart, so there's a couple things I recommend doing and there's a couple things we need to do to get it ready for the lithium battery. The first thing is, is we are going to replace the solenoid. It is old and it looks pretty corroded and in bad shape. Next, we are going to bypass the OBC, and I recommend bypassing the OBC in these older club cars, uh, just right off the bat. And the last thing we'll do is replace the main B positive and B negative cables to our battery. All right, go ahead and take a photo of your solenoid. That way you know how to hook the new one back up. Okay, we have, uh, there's actually two solenoids on this car and I went ahead and replaced them and I put everything back the way it came off the old solenoid. Just take your time and take photos for reference. We also went ahead and replaced our main positive cable, which is gonna to run to the positive post in our battery. And now I'm going to disconnect the main negative from the OBC right here. And I'm gonna replace it and put a new negative cable on there. And while you're back here and doing your solenoid and everything, make sure all your eyelets are clean and all your posts are clean. Okay, so I took all the negative grounds off the main B negative post there. And now you can, your old charging cable, or your, I'm sorry, your old main negative cable, you can pull that through the OBC and get rid of it. This was the gray wire coming from our old charge receptacle and I uh, capped it off. And these two right here, were also going to the B negative post and going to the OBC. And I went ahead and cut and capped those off. Next, we are going to bypass the OBC. And to do that, I'm going to disconnect this end of the harness. So normally I would undo these 10 millimeter bolts and remove the whole OBC at this point, but, but the customer did not want a big open space. So he asked to leave the, the OBC panel here. So I'm gonna cut these and leave just enough to uh, be able to cap these screws off. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut this side of the harness off. All right, to successfully bypass the OBC, you joint connect the blue and white wire together and you can cap the rest of them off. And when you plug this back into the wiring harness coming out of the controller, your OBC will be bypassed. And here's a quick look of it plugged in. Blue and white are jumped, plugged into the harness. Now you can go ahead and run your main positive and negative cables into the battery tray. Using your Phillips head screwdriver, go ahead and remove your old charge receptacle and the wires coming out of the back. Go ahead and slide your new receptacle into place. Using the nuts and bolts supply, go ahead and secure it. You can see it's very secure mount. So I've cleaned out this battery tray and I sprayed the frame with a protective coating and have it ready for the battery to go in. And I did put some wood down on each side and I did mount my charger with the self tapping screws provided down to the wood over here and that'll help protect it from splash up. 
Next, you can plug your charger input wire into the back of the charge receptacle. All right, I went ahead and set the battery in place, marked my holes and drilled them out. And with these older carts, you're gonna have to get creative and address the corrosion issues. Now at this point, I would normally install my 12 volt reducer and I'd probably put it here in this cart. But this customer doesn't even have lights. It is a maintenance cart, so it's used during the day and there's no 12 volt accessory. So we are not going to install the 12 volt reducer. But if I did have 12 volt accessories, I would hook them up to the reducer and I would plug the wiring harness into the reducer here. Click those in together. On the other end of the reducer, I would put my smaller yellow and black to my positive and negative post to give the reducer 48 volts. And then I would hook this up to all my 12 volt accessories or a fuse block. This is my 12 volts out. And I would run the long orange up to the dash and hook that up to the key switch on the cold side. Go ahead and get the LCD screen wiring harness and plug it into the communication port. And next I'll take the rest of the wiring harness and I will run it underneath the frame and secure it to existing wiring harnesses and run it up to the dash. In regards to the two extra ports on the communication wiring harness, uh, they are for CAN bus connections, but you are not gonna need to use those for this cart, so go ahead and tuck those away. All right, there are two mounting screws on each side here and here. Once you remove those, you can pull the, this panel out and I went ahead and fished the communication wiring harness to the LCD screen up through the dash. And next we are going to make a hole using our hole saw. And I'm gonna utilize this space right here. This warning label's already peeling. It's in bad shape, so I'm gonna take it off. And I'm gonna put the voltage meter right here using a two inch hole saw. Go ahead and slide your voltage meter in. Next slide your bracket over the two studs in the back. Secure them with the seven millimeter nuts. Now that our voltage meter is secure, this is when I would hook up the voltage reducer, long orange, to the cold side of our key switch. But uh, this old work cart has the key switch bypass right here, so we're not gonna do that. We're gonna leave all that alone for the customer, but uh, I'm pretty sure we'd go right here in this blue. That way, when the key switch is turned on, the 12 volt supply will activate. At this point, go ahead and plug in your voltage meter wiring harnesses. There are two of them. One's a six pin and one's a four pin. You're not going to get them backwards. Uh, they only go in one way. Now you can do some wire management and zip tie your slack and hide it here in the dash. Once you do that, you can go ahead and put your dash panel back together. Now we're gonna hook everything up that goes to the positive post and you go smallest to biggest, biggest touch in the terminal. And if you had your 12 volt reducer, you would start with that, but we're not installing that on this car. So go ahead and take your positive from your charger output wire and then we'll get our main positive cable here, put them to the post. Using your 13 millimeter wrench, go ahead and tighten the post down and you wanna get it tight, no wiggle room, not too tight. Go ahead and slide your terminal protector in place. And for the negative side, go ahead and start with your output from your onboard charger. Next is your main negative cable from your controller. Once you have them together, go ahead and put them to your post. Now that we have everything installed, let's go ahead and test cart operation. Turn your battery on by pressing the on off button. It will illuminate. Put your cart and run. Turn your key switch to on. Put your cart in forward. Lightly hit the accelerator. And we have cart operation. Once you have cart operation, go ahead and max charge your battery by plugging in your 15 amp or higher extension cord into the AC port. If 
the charger will kick on. You'll hear the fan running and it will charge the battery, complete a charge cycle and shut off. All right, guys, that's it for the installation video on Eco Batteries 51.2 volt, 72 amp hour lithium golf cart battery into this older Club Car DS. We hope this video helped you out and answered any questions you may have had. If you have additional questions, you can call us weekdays 9 to 5 Eastern at Palmetto Battery Pros. You can also leave a question in the comments and we'll answer those as soon as we can. And if we missed anything or if there's an easier way to do something, please leave that in the comments below as well. We're not know-it-alls and we appreciate that feedback. We are an authorized dealer for Eco Battery, so if you'd like to purchase one of these batteries, you can order by phone by calling us at Palmetto Battery Pros. You can also order online at palmettobatterypros.com. We assist our customers through the purchasing process, installation, and throughout ownership. Please hit that like and subscribe button. We have more lithium unboxing and installation videos coming out on different types of product and different types of battery brands. So yeah, we look forward to seeing you next time. We appreciate you watching. Thanks y'all.